one of the definite new topics of gaming is old school games versus new school games, especially in tabletop RPGs. Some have called out for an old school renaissance. But what is it that makes an old school game an old school game versus a new one? Pencils and charts on grid paper versus pre-published maps and apps? Not exactly. It's definitely a product of the time creating the atmosphere in which we game. Let me preface this video by saying two universal truths regarding time. Many elements make up an age, not just a subject of discussion from that age. There are outside factors. And the business-driven elements have always been there, but it's their prevalence, their handling, and possible encouragement that is different. I'm also not going to discuss the history of tabletop gaming. There are plenty of videos out there that do that splendidly, so I will point out some very pertinent facts. Pre-1983, most games were hex and shit, or historical war games, or played old board games. Yes, D&D was around since 1974, but its full cultural impact was not widely felt until later, when 1983 had the first widely successful release of a mass production print of D&D. Pre-1993, there were no CCGs, and the creation of the DCI changed how future tournaments and table gaming would be handled. Vampire of the Masquerade changed RPGs. Now, other games helped the changes, but... Vampire the Masquerade brought along the cooperative RPG game mentality as a mainstream concept. The D20 open game license of the 2000s has never been copied, and there are reasons why no other game company has gone this route. And finally, unmistakably, social media has passed a bullhorn to every loudmouth, whiny brat, and self-important gamer in existence. And oh, for the most part, companies have let them dictate the course of things. So, what are the dividing factors of the old-school grognard versus the shiny new consumerism? Well, a lot of older RPG games had a very fatal, uncertain aspect to them. This often centered on the idea that the GM was your enemy. Board games and war games used to be relatively unbalanced or hideously random, and tactics or numbers were supposed to make up for equipment and uncertainty. Newer games want fair play above all. RPG games treat character death as a very serious event now. You usually don't die at zero HP. Newer games stray away from the hard, bloody discoveries. To reinforce this, balance is everything. So, is it certain or is it uncertain? That's the difference. Now, old school games don't tell you how to play the game. They let you read the rules and decide for yourself. You can also choose to take a failing path, whether you know it or not. You might just suck at this game. That's been a constant in older style games. Since 2000-something, there's a broad possibility you don't build a game experience without first consulting the handy placed hint sidebar, online articles, forums, and the community at large. Hell, netlisting is the very core idea of generating an outcome via metagaming. You go out and you acquire the outcome you want from available info and products. Now, if you thrive on creating your own settings, your own tabletops, your own, that is, terrain, your own art miniatures, hell, your own space marine chapter, count yourself lucky. This is the heart of the old school. But why create your own thing? Money is all the creativity you'll ever need. You can have the official rulebook with the official dice on official playmats with official minis. However, some companies have gone a step farther where you must use their dice, you must use their minis, and you can't use any rule that isn't officially released in the online errata or in printed rules. Hell, let's take it a step farther and have a cloud-based app where we own the rules and you have to pay us to access them and we can change the rules anytime. Why have any ownership or control over the game at all when the company can provide you with everything? Because Big Brother wants to play games too. For those of you who have ever gone to a craft store to get gaming supplies, count yourself lucky. One thing I'm going to point out that most people may not have noticed is it comes down to differences in how we communicate. Nowadays, buzzwords are everything. Think about the buzzwords you've heard in gaming. Fast playing. Easy to learn. Quick pickup games. Well, think about it. They're all about the sudden experience. Instant gratification at its very most. This is the heart of the old versus new schools, not just in gaming, but in culture as a whole. We no longer have the time. We won't be able to really go back to the way it was because society overall has been squeezing every ounce of time out of us that it can. Stranger yet, with more new gamers joining the hobby, it's all too likely that more games will be mass-produced, yearly issued junk that panders to the lowest common denominator that has an open wallet. Because the now giant game companies really care about sales figures and increases in hits on their new proprietary-only player login app. See, old school games made money, 
but it didn't have that focus. Old school was games for gamers. New school is games for everyone. TMN copyright, and you better not infringe or we will demonetize your channel and send you a cease and desist order.